Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And I'll start with some announcements. First of all, don't forget March Madness, where you can qualify for some free classes that include long COVID research boot camp, uh, vaccines mini course, cancer mini course, um, navigating today's healthcare system safely. You've heard me put out a lot of messages indicating that's something to pay attention to. Uh, diet, lifestyle, and immunity, and mindset matters most for those of you who maybe have some problems with habit change and need to work on that. Um, so if you're interested in how you can qualify for these, uh, to choose some of these for free, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com, and we will send something to you. Second thing, another free class coming up for healthcare workers on April 17th at 9 p.m. Eastern. And this one's going to be a free sample class. Like what would it be like if you were learning from me in class um, how to uh, conduct a healthcare practice? So if you'd like to join me for that free class, pampopper at msn.com. Don't forget our fabulous free food. Uh, this afternoon we had an event at our office and we served our chocolate decadence uh, bars and they're actually not bad in terms of health. If you're gonna have something, um, a treat, uh, they're some of the least dangerous, I guess you could say <laughs> and that. Uh, that lots of oatmeal and good stuff in addition to the chocolate. But anyway, we have a whole catalog full of this stuff and it's shelf stable for a really long period of time. So if any of this stuff interests you, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. All right, so I have some interesting stuff to share with you today. Almost all human function and disease is related to the microbiome. The composition and behavior of the microbiome influences the risk of degenerative conditions like coronary artery disease and cancer and can even influence your mental and emotional state. You might uh, remember a video from just a few months ago in which I reported information showing that the bugs in your gut are even involved in your motivation to exercise or lack thereof. So the relationship and the, uh, between the microbiome and the immune system in particular has been known for a long time. These bacteria can increase or lower inflammation, and according to a new study, they even influence wound healing throughout the body. Regulatory T cells from the gut rein in other immune cells to make sure that inflammation levels don't increase too much. You need some inflammation for healing, but too much of a good thing is not a good thing, as you know. Bola Hanna, an immunologist at Harvard Medical School, was observing the behavior of Treg cells in wound healing in mice. Following an injury, these cells travel to the site. Their numbers peak after four days or so, after which they mediate the transition from an inflamed to a non-inflamed state. And this is a really important step in wound healing. Hanna's intention was to profile the T cells at the injury site, and while doing this made a very interesting discovery. There were several types of T cells, one of which expressed a transcription factor that is a hallmark for regulatory cells that reside in the colon. Following this discovery, Hanna and his colleagues used optical tagging to track the movement of these cells throughout the body. They discovered that colonic regulatory T cells left the colon, traveled to organs and tissues, including damaged muscle tissue, to assist with repair. Additionally, gut-derived regulatory T cells were shown to heal non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in mice. So it isn't just a matter of an injury being healed. Um, chronic degenerative conditions can sometimes be positively influenced by the bugs in your gut. A subsequent experiment in which mice were genetically engineered to lack these Treg cells showed that these mice healed from injury more slowly, and they also tended to develop fibrosis. Additionally, there were higher levels of interleukin-17, an inflammatory cytokine at the injury sites in these mice. The researchers reported that germ-free mice or mice that had been treated with antibiotics had delayed or insufficient healing. So the bottom line is be kind to your gut microbiome. The bugs in your gut influence all aspects of your health, your mental health, your physical health, your ability to recover from an injury or from disease or even to prevent disease. So a couple of things. The first thing is your diet affects your gut, your gut microbiome. The, the beneficial bacteria in your gut, they like plant foods, they like fiber, they like carbohydrate. Um, the bugs will, will use, these micro, mi microbiome uh, bacteria will use up about 250 calories worth of carbohydrate a day, making anti-inflammatory substances. The pathogens like protein, fat, animal food, processed food, they really like that. And so what you want to do is preferentially feed the positive, the beneficial bacteria in your gut. 
And the second thing is if you're like most of us, um, you maybe haven't eaten well all your life, or you've taken a lot of prescription drugs, or you've taken a lot of antibiotics in particular, you might be a really good candidate to uh, take a really good strong probiotic for a while. Uh, most of us uh, have needed to do that. Some of us still do. Um, I made a decision a long time ago that after all the abuse that I put my body through before I decided to become healthy, it wouldn't hurt to uh, to take a probiotic for the long term, which I do. So anyway, um, I just find it infinitely fascinating. There's so much to learn. There are always new discoveries, which is why reading uh, science magazines and journals is so much fun, even with some of the propaganda in there. Some of it, there's really good stuff to learn. All right. Well, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.